Henry, what you got going on this weekend? Anything fun? Um, just hanging with some friends a little bit. We're in the middle of our move, so I'm moving up to the Carolinas. So I'm sat on the floor right now in my in my because <laughs> I don't have a desk or anything. <laughs> it's all packed up. It's on the shipping container right now. So, uh, yeah, but uh, it's pretty beginnings. Weekend overall. Yeah, that's right. I, I haven't shared it yet, but I made a little joke at the start of uh, the trade recap video I recorded the other day that was redefining the trading floor. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> everyone else, everyone can, everyone can hear me. I just got a text that said, for some reason, Henry, my dad couldn't hear us. Dad, it's got to be something on, on your end, I think. Oh, he got it. He got it. Okay, cool. All righty, here in just a minute. Um, yeah, I, I kind of don't really have anything going on. When I leave here, I'm going to go out to my buddy's ranch. We're going to go hunting in the morning. Um, other than that, he's watching football all week. Nice. Watching football all week. My Jaguars are doing pretty good this season, so I've been able to actually watch them. Um, other than that, outside of anything, I ordered a monitor. I got a brand new monitor and, uh, um, I, uh, was supposed to actually come in on Wednesday. Somehow got delayed till tomorrow. I ordered a couple of new things for my desk. So I'm just waiting on that stuff to come in. Other than that, that's really about it. Excited to get on the, uh, the Sunday call. It's funny how when you do, uh, for a prerequisite for anyone who doesn't know, we've been doing Sunday calls even before firsthand was a thing. Myself and Henry were doing small group calls for since the last couple weeks of January. Yeah. Um, and it started About out with, it started out with myself and Henry and two other individuals. And then, you know, we kind of were like, hey, we, you know, we can reach out to a couple more individuals, see if they want in and See if they want. It was really a very small call, small group call. It was just a small study. We were just going over what happened the past week, and then what could potentially unfold. And then, kind of a, more people kind of got into it. And then, you know, our our call list kind of grew and grew. And then we were like, you know what, you know, what can we do to, you know, have it to where it's not just me or Henry sending out an email link every uh, or an email once a week with a with a Zoom call. And then having that, like, how could we potentially build something that that actually is substance and, and you could go in and people can utilize it? And so, you know, we did small groups just sending out Zoom links for over six months. Mm -hmm. And then in June, we kind of were like, all right, let's let's take some time, you know, out of our days outside of just our little small group studies. And and let's actually start to build something um you know being a website that we could actually use we didn't want to do a discord we didn't want to do a telegram it was something that we thought would uh benefit us going outside of the norm to you know put the work up front and and have something where people it, it was unique to people and you weren't just on a discord or a telegram because if you've been in those you know they're good but they don't it's very hard to get lost in that stuff it's very hard to you know, it gets repetitive and it's the same old stuff. And we were like, let's do something outside of it. So on, when we built first hand trading, um, at first it was really just going to be kind of like a landing page for people to continue to join the calls. We wanted more traders in the calls. We wanted people in there and, you know, we wanted to see what they were looking at and what questions they had and all that stuff. And, um, once we started building it, we were like, we were like, actually, what if we built a back end and we had like a, you know, a private members page on the back end and in that back end, you know, we obviously gave out links to calls, but then we had, you know, a forum where we post markups and trading psychology. And, and we you know, what if we did assignments that traders could go and utilize every day or every week, excuse me. And, you know, we could give them feedback. Other individuals could give them feedback and every week could be a new week of assignments. It could be a whole different, you know, subject or whatever the case is. We could have so many different topics that you could focus on on assignments. And then um, we were like, what if we also added a social aspect to it? Like a social platform, you know, everyone's on Twitter, a bunch of traders, there's a huge community on Twitter. Um, and 
I like Twitter. It, it's what met me and myself and Henry. This is, you know, we met through Twitter and, and back in January. But the one thing I don't like about Twitter is all the excess noise. You've got a lot of drama in there. You've got all these other things going politically thrown at you. It's just, it's so everyone knows, like when you scroll through Twitter, you know that the stuff that you engage with, and then you know the stuff that you don't engage with and the stuff that you don't engage with still finds its way in and around your Twitter. And it's just not, if you're there to learn and you're there to get information, it's something where it's, you shouldn't have to be distracted. And so we are like, let's build a social platform and, and obviously keep it, you know, trading oriented it so where whether it was psychological or technical or whatever the case is people could go in and they can share stuff right it's me and henry have been very vocal over the past couple of months too about how this isn't the carson and henry show yes we have experience and we've been able to find success throughout it but over time you know it's not the carson and henry show we can help where we can help but we want other experienced traders to come in and step in and you know we want it to grow overall with regards to no matter where you are within your trading you can either come in and get value or you can come in and give value and you know who knows what that can do for you or who can find you because you know i might be able to give you some advice and teach you and all that stuff but then also what if you don't like to trade but i trade and what if someone was just as experienced as i was and they trade what you trade and you can connect with them and you know that there's been you know me and henry have gone back and forth of figuring out how to potentially once we grow you know file people in a community into like little small groups and in that small groups based on what you trade and then you know there's a small group of individuals that trade what you trade and you have more experienced traders on one side and very inexperienced traders on one side and it allows you to you know connect with the community at a whole but then break off into some form of smaller even niche or community of what you specifically like to trade what you like to follow and so we kind of got into that just me and Henry worked day in and day out. I mean, we were on calls just like this, just me and him for, geez, four months. Yeah, something like that. Four, four or five months every single day knocking out. I mean, sometimes it was one hour, sometimes it was six hours. And we we basically kind of got to a point where we kept we kept going and every time we would get on, we would go one way and then we would get another idea and we would see that one way didn't work. And so it went through several, several, iterations of of what it kind of wanted to be and i mean i'll give henry the credit that he came up with the name firsthand trading i think it's an amazing name i think it means so much behind what you actually need to find success in this which is your firsthand experience and the community is meant to offer and provide an opportunity to get that firsthand experience and get that firsthand feedback from individuals that are are more experienced and have have maybe gone through that mistake and maybe can hopefully help guide you away from that before you make it yes there's mistakes that people just have to make before they know that they don't need to make it anymore and that's just inevitable and that's just not only in trading but outside of life you've got to know where to step and sometimes you don't know where to step so you got to trip and then you'll know. And so that's just the way trading works. But if there's some things that we can guide you away from to at least shorten that learning curve to where a learning curve that might take you three, five years, if that can take you one to two years, that's a big win in our book. That's why me and Henry are here, right? We want to get to a point where, yes, you're here and you're creating, you know, this, this development and, and you find a process in your journey, but also we we don't want you on the calls every week asking the same old questions. We wanna make sure you get answers and we wanna make sure we see you grow to eventually hopefully, you know, give back to the community the way same way you received value into the community. And then also, you know, go and be your own in this world, right? Who knows what you can do and where you can go and what you can be and what you can, you know, make and create. And that's our main purpose is to, to not always just you know, we want to feed you and give you as much as we can, but we want to get you on flying on your own. We want to get you on your feet. You know, Michael said it best when he was talking about how, you know, if there's one thing you could, you could do for him when he stepped away was if you see anyone knocked down in this game of trading, stick your hand out and help them stand up. And that's really what first hand is about is we're trying to get you guys to stand up and walk on your own, whatever issues you're having in trading, right? It's not going to happen. You're not just, you know, there might be a question that you ask on a call and you might not figure it out by the very next week, right? But continuously kind of bringing it to the table over time, it will gradually work itself out. If you put the time in it, you put the effort in it, it will definitely work its way out. I promise you. I have found that every hurdle I've ever had in trading, the second I created awareness to it, the second I created a plan to fix whatever that was and I created consistency, 
it didn't matter. Some took days, some took weeks, some took months, some took years, right? But that's just me as a person. There's some, there's some things that I could fix quickly. There's some things that I needed time to fix because not a lot of it was on the charts. It was me as a person. It was the things outside, the people outside of my trading that were affecting me, right? A big thing that I like, like to talk about and when people will ask me is like vendettas, right? We all have some sort of vendetta. We're trying to prove something to someone and some of that's small and some of that's big. And I think a lot of times when I realized what my vendettas were, and I even wrote them on paper, what am I, you know, you might not want to say it out loud, but we all deep down know what we're trying, we're, some, we're trying to prove something. Sometimes it's to ourselves, right? And, and the realization that you don't even have to prove to yourself anything, that if you just do the right things over and over and over again, you just change as a person. I like to tell people all the time too, like, you're not a tree. You're not there where you are forever. You can get up and move and change and and make different choices and and create a new habits and stay you know stay consistent to what you put on paper and find the right life decisions and, and save money here and save money there and figure all this stuff out you can do it right there's so many people in this world and so many different industries that have reached so much success they all didn't start from the same place some started really really bad some started well off but there's an underlying of the ones that had it the worst. They, if they would have just stayed in their same life path that they were given, right? They would have just probably continued creating that same thing over and over and over again. They had to find ways to create new life paths. And when I realized that as a trader, it was one of the things that actually grew me. I was like, I can create, I can, what I want, I can create. I don't need it right now. I need time to do its thing but I don't need it right now. I won't get it right now. It's impossible for me to get what I want right now. I tell people all the time, like one thing that I still fight is just the time aspect of it because I know where I'm going in this life. I'm certain and so confident on where I'm going in this life that if, you, if people knew where I was wanting to go in life, they would realize one, why I'm up every early, why I'm up every day early, why I want, why I'm willing to put so much hours just sitting at desks and doing all this stuff. But just the simple fact of I know where I'm going and the places that I want to go are so big and so crazy to a lazy mind that I cannot sit here and expect results tomorrow. I can't get there next week. I have to submit and find time and enjoy, right? My, I, finding a default emotion of joy is one of the best things you can do if you're just joyful for where you're at and what you're doing the time aspect does not matter that's one little rant you'll find i like to get in a little bit of rants but it's something that i think uh a lot of i have so much to say and you know there's so much things to say and i can't wait to meet all you guys and we would love for you some of you guys to find time on this call to at least come in and share your journey i know we have an introduce yourself uh tab in the forum I'm going to give Henry a couple seconds to kind of at least walk through the website and go over any other things that he might want to go over. Sweet. Yeah. Just turn a little something out on Twitter to see if anyone really wants to join us as well. All right, cool. Uh, yeah, great. Absolutely. Trading is, a, is quite the journey. Um, all right. I'm going to hop into the website. I'll take everyone through briefly and feel free to stop me along the way if you have oh, any questions you, about anything. Yeah, I was going to say ahead, questions too. Like um, if you want to put a chat in there, me and Henry, one of the, one of us, if we don't have the mic, we'll sit there and we'll watch the chat if you want to ask questions. If you aren't really shy and you want to hop on, just raise your hand and we'll we'll definitely get to you. It's not it's very casual, even on our Sunday calls, like just raise your hand and within minutes we'll sit there and we'll call on you. It's perfectly fine um you know we, we we encourage activity we don't want you guys to be shy like over time i want this to this whole idea of first-hand trading and your development like find family in it so yeah we started to see that a lot through throughout our sunday calls i want to show something on the site too i'll get into it there's a because this is how a lot of our members have connected there's a i'll get to it in a bit but there's a chat feature as well where you can directly message people so as you start to make friends within the community it's a great opportunity to just shoot a message and you know you can find opportunities with others to do some back testing or get in the charts or chat about your trading week or you know share things outside of the markets whatever you need to do but uh 
here's here's what you see when you first get to the website firsthandtrading.com uh, i'll take you to the home page right here you can take a scroll through this we've just got a couple videos up here a little about section about us and of course and explain what firsthand trading means really just about getting that firsthand experience right you can learn however much from um you know learning how to trade on on youtube and that kind of thing but ultimately it's going to come down to you it's going to come down to your participation in the markets your understanding of yourself and that's what's going to take you far in this journey and that's going to what's going to lead to your profitability and and long-term success ultimately so uh we've had quite a few members join us since uh since the top set uh call yesterday so it's very nice the community is continuing to grow I'll say too, we do have a lot of educational content and our previous recordings from Sunday calls, midweek market reviews, all out on YouTube. So I'll just show that quickly. If you go over to our YouTube page, you can subscribe here. We're at youtube.com slash at FH Trading Group. That's right there. And I could put it in the chat for you all too. There we go. So if you want to subscribe to us on YouTube, We've got all of our old recordings right here from the past. I think we didn't get the first couple, but we've got since February. So a lot of a lot of content here with uh, a lot of good nuggets in there. So check that out if you like. We've been starting to share some short form content as well. So uh, if you enjoy that kind of thing, we've got it there. Back to the website. Here's the services that we offer and. Um, Again, all of our, our Sunday calls, our midweek reviews, everything is free of charge. We just want you all here to learn and grow and develop as, as traders. We've got our weekend calls, which we do every Sunday at 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern time. That's when we do our, uh, we talk about the previous week. We, we go into our pre-week analysis, talk about what we expect for the, the week to come. Uh, we go over our training exercises. We'll share a new one, and we'll also review the one from the previous week. Uh, we'll take a look at the submissions that were made and provide feedback there. And then it's just an opportunity for you to come on and ask any questions that you have about technical things or psychological things, whatever you're dealing with and you want to get answers on. The Sunday call is a great opportunity for that. Main week market reviews is the next thing. These are Wednesdays in the evening. We try to get them out uh, by 10 p.m. at the latest, but they're usually out a bit earlier, normally around 7 or 8. Uh, here, these are just really brief videos, normally about mm, 10 to 20 minutes. And uh, we just do a quick recap of what's occurred in the week so far and what we expect for the remainder of the week. Uh, those are just recorded calls and you can find them posted in the forum on the website after you sign up to be a member. And um, they're also posted on our, our YouTube after they're uploaded as well. The training exercises, we can jump more into that and I'll show you in the forum as well. But these are the activities that we offer as ways to help you develop as a trader, work on new skills, uh, and just get a better understanding of yourself and the things that you, you may find success with, the things you may struggle with in the market. And uh, by completing these and then submitting them for the opportunity to have them reviewed on our Sunday calls, uh, you'll get a lot of good feedback and it, and it will help with your development. And I really want to encourage people to, to do these and to not feel any concern around if, if you do one and let's say you have a loss for the week, still submit it and still be proud of that submission because it's an opportunity for you to learn. And it's also an opportunity for everyone else in the community to learn, right? Everything here. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say one thing too. I'll add on the training exercises. We have found um, and I'm going to call one one girl out in the community and she knows who she, who I'm talking about. Uh, her name is Kate. You'll see her in the community. Um, she has been so good. Others too, Alan, Axel, as well. I know all you guys are in there, but Kate has been so thorough and transparent about her training exercises. It is so cool to watch. You know, we've done, how many do we have? Like 14? Yeah, right. like 14 now. Yeah, we have like 14, 15 training exercises, and she's done every single one. And to see how she has grown as a trader, and just to see overall how her entries, exits, her being able to hold trades longer, all that stuff has grown. And I will still, I gave her kudos on the last call, but I'll give her kudos and I'll give everyone else kudos <laughs> who's been consistent with it because it is scientific how when you do stuff like this, 
how you get results, right? We're not asking you to do it on live. We're asking you to do it on demo, but demo is exactly like live. There's no difference and no corresponding at all besides what is in your head. I just wanted to add that. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, these are a really great opportunity to continue to develop your skills and, and your confidence in the markets. And uh, you learn a lot from from the wins and the losses. You learn more from the losses, really, because that's where you can take lessons out of the market and continue to grow and move forward. And you'll see it in the other submissions. People still submit when they lost and when they have a loss, and that's totally fine. And we actually ask that you uh, you do it in a paper account and you submit your your records of trades with it as well so that you can see over time instead of resetting the account you allow for that record to be maintained because you can see that it's okay to take a loss and you can recover back into profit and mitigate that loss over time if you reset the account then you lose your your track record of of your development and you want to be able to see that to to show yourself that you're progressing and continuing to learn uh, so that's the training exercises. We'll jump into that more inside of the forum when we get onto the back end. But the last two things are the community forum where we have, um, we've got a whole thing of resources for you. We're gonna be continuing to add, add to this, add more details around actual specific educational and technical concepts. Uh, but for now, it's mostly a, a holding place for our training exercises, for uh, the, midweek reviews and for the Sunday calls to be posted when the recordings are available and that kind of thing. And we have a couple other resources in there as well. It's also the place for you to introduce yourself in the welcome section. And then we have a question and answer thing in there as well, if you want to jump in and ask any questions about anything. And lastly, we have the social group. We call it firsthand social and you'll see that on the member side as well. This is where you can just basically treat it like your Twitter, right? If you have a cool trade for the day, if you have a question about something, if you want to share some analysis that you did for the pre-week or, or the post-week, put it in there. You'll be able to get feedback from everyone. It works just like a social platform. So there's a reaction button, there's like button, there's comments, yada, yada, yada. You know, pretty cool stuff. Uh, testimonials down here. So these are just a couple of the wonderful community members who provide us, us some feedback about their success over the past uh 10 or 11 months or however long we've been uh doing these weekly calls for now so go ahead and take some time on your own to read through those if you'd like um, and thank you again to everyone who's, who's made those submissions and then lastly you'll get down to the end right here start now button and you'll see these across the home page as well so when you're ready i think everyone here if you're on this you've probably made an account already but uh, otherwise you can just click the start now button and that will take you to our members page. And this is just the headquarters really for all the things that we offer to uh, those who have signed up as a member for now. So you can book a one-on-one -on -one right here. If you go into there, you can go in here and schedule it. We've already had a couple uh, bookings this week. We're really excited to meet with you all. And um, thank you for filling out the forms. Carson and I are gonna be doing some work over the weekend to make sure we're well prepared for those one-on-ones. And uh, we're gonna, we are going to um, work to provide you a lot of value in that time. Next is the community forum. If you go in there, you will see all of the, our different categories. So first, we've got welcome to the forum. I think a lot of you have found this already and begun to introduce yourself. I'll be popping back in there and replying to uh, some that I haven't gotten to quite yet. Uh, but in here, you'll see our FAQs. So if, if you have any questions, some of them may be answered in there already. If not, then you can drop us a question elsewhere. Here's just a brief introduction, some forum rules just about generally respecting one another, encouraging each other through this process, that kind of thing. And then introduce yourself. You can find that right there. And just go in there and leave a comment here. Tell us a bit about your story, how you got into trading, what you like to trade, what's your kind of style, that kind of thing. Helps us get to know you and kind of cater the firsthand experience that we offer here to you. I'll jump back into the categories. So next we'll have our weekly group calls and our midweek reviews. All of the recordings will be posted inside of here. I share them in the social channel as well. And if you're subscribed to our YouTube, you'll see them as soon as they're posted on there. But if you don't see them there, you'll see them posted in these categories as well.
Next is our training exercises. So this is where you're gonna find all the exercises for the current week and previous weeks. And this is where you'll make your submissions as well. So I'll just show you how that's done real quick. You can go into training exercises. And then here's the current one, exercise 14. So you go into there, you can see what the exercise is. So we give an overview. We talk about the goals and the specifications for it. These are kind of the rule sets that we want you to follow for this specific exercise. And then when you get down to here, this is where you can write your comment in there. If you just click on that, you can type in your comment. You can click this image button and add your screenshots of your trade and of your trade history as well. And uh, you'll just drop those in there. And then Carson and I will go through and provide feedback. Sometimes we try to provide feedback um, ahead of the calls, but if not, um, we'll definitely be sure to review them on the calls. And that's all, that's always something that we do. Uh, so that's the training okay. exercises. I'll add one thing, Henry, I don't mean to butt in, but one thing, no, too, and the reason why we do it on video is if you're, the, that's how we give you guys the best feedback. You know, we might find time throughout the week and we'll go in and make a little comment on there, but really, the best thing that you're going to get out of it is having it in front of us on a live call and you have us talk over it right there's so much that i can have that i can say and and have all of these you know little tiny things of advice and all that stuff and it's so hard and the point doesn't really get us across when i when we can sit there and type it out now that's why it's so good to have you know that reply button and you have other traders and all that stuff reach out and and they've been so good at giving each other feedback not even just myself and henry but they've been so good at interacting with each other giving themselves feedback and and picking themselves up right if you go through and you scroll through those you'll see that some of those people are are putting um putting out that they're losing and all that stuff. And and you you can see in, in some of the comments that people are encouraging and saying, hey, it might feel bad, but it's really, from a third person perspective, it's not as bad as you think it is, right? I, I've had this, this, and this. And so, yes, you'll get that handcrafted feedback from us live on the video. And do not be scared. Do not be, like, I promise you, these people in this community, they want to see you do good, right? I tell people all the time, a, 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 a nice, nice dinner table is just as bad as a uh, a, a McDonald's lunch on the side of the road. If you're sitting at that table by yourself, all these people want to sit at the same table and they, they want to see you do good. So do not be scared. Do not be hesitant to, to just say, Hey, you know, I messed up. I tell people all the time when I was going into this, I was the first one that would raise my hand and be like, I keep doing this and it's been screwing me over. How do I stop it? And, and, and I didn't care what other people in the room thought of me because they're not pressing the buy and sell button like I am. They're not going where I'm going, right? And so have that idea of one, they are there to support you. They're there to encourage you. They're there to give you their feedback based on their experience. And just don't hold back. I, I promise you, you'll get so much more benefit out of it. I can understand why some people are scared to post their entries, whatever the case is. You will not get bad feedback at all from anything. You're not gonna, you know, be called names or, or all this stuff. No one's going to make fun of you. This is, you are in such a safe place with regards to your development. Trust the process and know that myself and Henry throughout the past months have, have been doing this with these individuals and they've been good at being open and they've gotten nothing but good feedback. That's the only thing I wanted to add. You're good, Henry. Great. Uh, as we continue forward, these are just a couple other categories that you can go into on your own and, and find posts within here. We've made a couple posts regarding trading psychology, trading models, trade ideas, uh, and vision board as well. This is a place where you can go share your goals and aspirations. I encourage you to do that. It's important to have something to, to reach for and um, writing that down can, can help you work toward it. And then off topic and testimonials here, if you wanna share a testimonial throughout your experience with us, and then questions and answers. So these ones I'll leave to you all to, to go in yourself and explore those. And they should be open for post as well. So if you have something that's relevant to that specific category, you can click inside it and there should be a create post button right here. So you can click create new post. And then just like on a, another blog website or anything like that, you can give your post a title, write it in there and then add any images or links or video or whatever uh, you need to do. Okay, I'll go back to the members page. That's it for the community forum. Next, we've got 
first hand social. So you'll have probably seen this in here if you've been exploring around the website a bit. But this is where we'll share any updates about anything we've got going on. So you can see we posted about this evening's call, posted about Top Step there. Uh, this last week I shared a trade that I took inside of here and my analysis for it. So you can check that out right there. And then we'll share our midweek reviews and our, uh, our recordings of the Sunday calls in here as well. And you can see um, other folks are coming in and, and sharing some of their trades and analysis as well. So we encourage you to do that. This is a social channel just like Twitter. So uh, we try and keep it trading focused, but hop in, share your analysis, meet each other, connect. And uh, this, is, this is a great place to do that. If you go through each of these as well, you can see some of the things that have been kind of embedded in here because it's just a long chain at this point. Uh, but you can look at the media. So you can see past images and videos that have been shared if you're looking for something specific. You can see other members within here. And you can actually follow each other to get notified when a specific person posts. So over time, you can develop your own following and network within the platform. I'll say too, don't be scared. Make a profile picture. Like, you know, show yeah. people, you know, what you're about. I, I'm a big, one of my biggest pet peeves, and I know we have so many new followers and stuff like that. And if you're watching this, like, put a profile picture. It doesn't even have to be a picture of you if you don't want it to be right you can have it just be something that you like or charts or something like that but i think it's it it brings a little bit more life to the community but then also you know think about someone who is you you might want to meet with right or let's say you think of your socials and you've got someone that messages you to you know hey so and so and ask you a question if they don't have a profile picture it's just a little you know and so i encourage people all the time make a profile picture don't be shy if you don't even want it of yourself make it of a logo or something or something that you like or outdoors it doesn't it doesn't really matter um but i encourage you to to make it customizable to yourself and i think that it goes further than most people think yeah absolutely and if you want to do that you can come right up here to your profile first you'll see your notifications right here so you can click that and uh, you'll be able to see a list of new posts and that kind of thing as your notifications and then here if you click that little down arrow you can go to your profile and your account and edit your information in there so if you need to update your email address or if you need to uh, change your name or profile picture you can do all of that within there lastly we have a little about section let's see if it will load there we go so that just shows a couple of details about the social channel and the rules you know just general stuff be respectful to others uh, and then we have our events right here so if you click on there, you can see all the events. And when you click on this, it will provide you, it will take you to the event calendar. Oh, these are our past events. Hang on. Okay. So I may need to update that. But usually it will show you right here the upcoming events. If you don't see it right there, then I'll take you to the last thing, which is the event calendar. If you go back into the members HQ right here, you can click on event calendar. And this will take you to our full calendar where you can see all the upcoming Sunday calls and the midweek market reviews. And then here's today's hangout. So if you want to get the link for Sunday's call, you just click on this right here and then you can click learn more. And it will take you to the event page and then you scroll down. And there's the link right there. So on Sunday, 10 a.m., you just come in here, click that link, and it will take you right to the Google Meet, and you can join us on Sunday morning. I think that covers everything on the members back end. This is the last thing that I wanted to share with you all is this chat button right here. So I think it's a little bit tricky to see, but hopefully you'll get it, you'll get a feel for it uh, as you play around with the website a bit more. The blue button down here, if you click on that. It'll pull up this chat window. And here, the first one that you'll see at the top is First Hand Trading Group. That's our admin account. So if you have any questions about anything on the website, you can just click on that and send a message. Got some little demo ones in there, but uh, uh, do that. And then you can message folks directly on here as well. So you can see I've been sending a couple messages to people. And then if you wanna do a new chat, 
you can just click new chat. You can do a search if you like. like if I want to find Carson and send him a message, I can do a search for Carson, find him right there, say what's up, and then Carson can reply to me right there. And another feature here is if you want, you can actually do group chats as well. So if you develop a little bit of network within the site, if you got a couple people that you want to do a weekend back test with, or you want to talk about your analysis for the week, or just have a little um, private message group with, you can click new group chat like that. And then you can add everyone in you want to do a new group chat with like that. Oops. And then well, I lost it. But anyway, click new group chat. You can add people in, and then there should be a next button for you, and you can do a group chat within there. So there's Carson's reply for me. Woo. All right, cool. That's pretty much it in the back end of the website. Uh, if anyone has any questions about anything they've seen, feel free to hop on. You can raise your hand. You can call on the mic. You can drop a question in the chat. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Yeah, and stuff like this is where, you know, we'd, we'd love your guys' feedback, right? A big thing that, you know, even the point to where me and Henry have gotten so far is because we're so quick to ask people that we're in and around in the community, like, what can we do better, right? What's some things that, what's an area that you might like? What's an area that you might not like? What's an area that you might use a lot? What's an area that you might not use a lot, right? What's an idea that you might have that you might want integrated? And I think giving that feedback to us helps us tremendously because we actually hear you and we're gonna take time to figure out one, if it's possible, two, if we can do it and all that stuff. And so, you know, I'd love to hear from some of you guys even in the chat or on like the mic, like, what do you guys think about this? Is this something that you guys think that you guys could, you know, thrive in is it something that you guys think that you guys can find uh you know success in and you know we've, we've built this for individuals that are trying to figure out how to trade and figure out how they can become successful and consistent trading is this something that you think that you guys could potentially like utilize as long as you put in the effort and the time right i, I expect you know 16 percent or 16 people are on this call right now you guys took time out of your friday evening to join this call you're curious Right. I know what that's like. Like you're curious. You want to you want to find things. You have questions. And so whether it's, um, you know, about the community or if it's anything about myself or Henry or the charts, like feel free to feel free to use this. Use this right now and use this time um, before we leave, too. We'll give you guys a little rundown on what we see, um, what we see on the charts. But your feedback is is monumental because we will constantly try to integrate and find ways to better the community. Um, you know, I've been in several Discord communities. I've been in several Telegrams. I've bought courses. I've done all this stuff. I've been trading for six years. And I can tell you right now, and I know I'm a little biased, but if I, like, this, this is what I needed. I would have been eating this stuff up if I was where... I was six years ago, five years ago. Like we're here for you guys. This is something that me and Henry spent a lot of time doing and we want you guys to get enough out of it. So if there's things that you might like, you might dislike over time as you find familiarity with the website, reach out to us, right? Use that little DM message. That's the best way you can get, you can get your, uh, your questions answered. Poppy, go ahead. Yeah. Hi. I, uh, I saw you on, um, top step this week. Thank you. And you did a really good job. And in, in the, you know, I had a bad day that day. I, I, I blew up a, a ninja trader account with my with real money in it. And then I think I hit max loss on top step too. So just had a, uh, I'm an over trader. And you know, one of the, what you said, the the hook that really had me look into your. Your website was you said and i'll probably screw this up but it was something like you know i'm i'm not a reflection of uh see i'm not a, i'm not a reflection of my results but i'm a reflection of how i deal with my results and that really i mean it it changed my day it really did so i appreciate that and i think it's a really cool community i, I don't know <laughs> probably old enough to be y'all's grandfather but uh Nah, not quite that old, maybe. <laughs> but you know, it's it's, uh, it's really cool that what you've done here, and the fact that it's free too. I mean, I've I've paid for a lot of 
communities and uh, already feel like y'all have got a lot of, you offer a lot of value <laughs> here. And it's well, one uh, thing, one thing I will say, and I always throw him under the bus and he, he knows it is my dad's in here too. So trust me, we've had people, you, you won't, we've had, there's so many times where we've had people come in and say, Oh, I'm probably the old, I'm probably the oldest one here. I'm probably the oldest one here. And there's, there, we, ha we have a large audience. We have a very broad audience and we have a lot, but <laughs> he's in the chat. He's on this call right now. Um, you know, we, we have a, we have a, an older audience too. And, and, that's what's cool about it is that you know you you you're not alone especially with regards to age but i, I appreciate you for saying well, that because you know i'm also i'm i'm really new to trading you know i've only been doing it since i started with you know when we got locked in with covid is basically when i started i've lost i've lost a ton of money me too you know, so yeah i landed at top step I, you know that's so uh i could lose a little funny money I have I have been funded twice, and I, I lost the first account. And I'm still in the second one, but uh, I haven't been I haven't taken a withdrawal yet. So, I mean, it, and that's that's our that that's mine my myself and Henry's job is to as long as you put yourself in front of myself and Henry, you'll get that withdrawal. I'm confident in myself, and I'm confident in Henry. We will we will give you everything that you need but the thing is we'll give you everything but the most important part which is we're not going to be there in that room with you pressing those buttons right you have to really take what we say and what you get off of these calls and and use them right a lot of people and i used to do it too you know study in ict and I, I, that was actually going to be my next question as you have you ever uh studied ict concepts no i haven't um okay you know i I mean, I, I could go through the litany of all the different mm -hmm. people that I've, that I have studied, but, you know, basically I use like, uh, you know, I, I use Lux Algo and then, and I wait for the levels, but I don't always wait. I do a lot of what they call on top step, uh, diddle in the middle, you know, and I, then I'll, I'll get in that trade and I'll start losing money. I'll go, what the, why did I do that? Why did I get in right here when I should have waited till, you know, uh, 20 points below where the where the where the line is where it says you know this is a discount right here you know it's this is where you want to get in yeah and and yeah. also i've been trading the i've been trading the nq which is uh you know it's five bucks a tick and i think that's you know i don't i don't give myself enough room you know and then and i'll i stop out and then of course it does what i think it's going to do but i'm just i'm too early to the party and and then it you know it drops down and stops me out and then shoot shoots right back up. I don't know how many times that happens, but you know I I do have good days too. <laughs> they That's, aren't all yeah. bad. Yeah. You know it no, seems like. Think the bad days just rip my head off, man. Yeah, and that's well, that's that's a uh, a scientific thing. Is your your losses emotionally the way you take on the feeling of loss and win your losses are going to actually last longer so that feeling is going to feel 50 times more than what you would feel when you win so the goodness you feel when you win is half of what you feel bad when you lose it also yeah. lasts twice as long and so another thing that i'm huge on and i'm the big psychology guy but um is understanding how you are not doing this to yourself. Your body is doing it to you. Your body will release chemicals and it allows you to feel a certain way. And when you feel a certain way, you make a decision based on it. And over time, when you start to realize, okay, well, what is the bodily, what, what's the chemical that's released when I lose? It's called cortisol. It's that stress fight or flight release that you get, right? It's that, that feeling and you get a huge influx release of cortisol. So when you understand that, you know that no matter what, I still get it, right? The idea, and I was told a long, long, long time ago is like, you are numb, you're supposed to be numb, right? You're supposed to feel nothing. That's impossible. I tried, it's impossible. You all, you're a human, you bleed blood, your heart beats. So you're going to feel these things. Even six years into it, when I lose, I feel it. The one thing that is different between myself and someone that's new that doesn't realize it 
is when I get that feeling, yes, over time, I don't get as big of an influx of a release on it. But when I do get a release of cortisol, when I lose, I know it. I'm, I've felt it so many times that I know when it's happening. And now instead of making those impulse decisions that I made time and time and time again, when I got that feeling, all I'm doing is I'm changing the decisions. When I, I, when I feel the same feeling, when that feeling comes, instead of making the decision I made hundreds of times, I now make a new decision and I have to just practice making that new decision. Same thing with winning, right? When you win and you're talking about overtrading, winning or losing, when you win, you get an adrenaline release. That's the most contagious thing in the world. Everyone has some here or some way, shape or form felt an adrenal, adrenal, adrenaline release that. Um, and when that happens and it's over, you want more. It's like that was really really cool like my, my like your heart's beating you feel amazing and michael said it a long time ago but there's nothing more addictive than a trading high and i tell people all the time i've drank i've done drugs i've done all this stuff and there's nothing that has been more euphoric than a trading high and so when you have to same thing when i would feel that when i would feel that I would make the same same decision over and over and over again. I would trade. I would trade. I would want to try to get it back. I would get into another trade to try to feel it. I had to change my decision making and make a new choice of saying, and it's hard, and it's one of the hardest things you'll do. You walk away. You might not. It might be hard at first, but like anything with time and consistency, you'll realize that shutting that away. And I had time. I had, I had a day last week where um, I had. The market I, I was aiming for 10 just 10 handles right i've been playing the market a lot shorter just in this time i've been lowering my risk playing it a lot shorter than i normally would and so i was just doing one full pull of 10 handles very easy i've done it a thousand times it's not hard it went nine handles and stopped me out at break even i didn't lose a single dollar on the trade but the perfectionist in me and the person that has done it a thousand times and gotten that 10 handles it gave me nine and it gave back I got a more influx release of cortisol right there just because I was pissed because I was like, damn it. Like I, I, I got mad. And so it was just one of those things where it didn't, and I had other things going on in my life outside that day that I was just a little bit more busy, wasn't as focused and it got the best of me. I didn't lose a single dollar. It was me trying to be right and have it happen so many times. And it took me about 20 good minutes. I didn't place another trade following it, but it, I, it took me 20 minutes and I sat there just like this. staring at the screen and then I just closed my trading view and I, I, I sat there and I was pissed and I tell another people too is like one thing you can do and I said it on top step is close shop give it to a friend friend family member whatever or hide it from yourself put it put it in an obnoxious place where you don't you don't have access to it right that's the number one thing you can do is just subtract it from your life for 24 hours to where even if you wanted to you couldn't but another thing you can do is um realize realize that you will have another trade you will have another trade your heart's still beating tomorrow is going to come and it's going to go you've got another day right you don't have to you're not supposed to feel anything right and when you do feel stuff it's a game and me and henry talk about it constantly like it's a game of emotional equilibrium how long can you stay before you get a little skewed one way or the other whether it's cortisol or adrenaline whether you get skewed and it's how you respond when you get skewed right henry and i talk about it all the time right henry had a really really good big trading day a couple of weeks ago and he even called me i'll throw him out right now he even called me he said hey i had a i had probably one of my best trading days in the world that i've ever had and i need i need help dealing with it how do i deal with it and i gave him advice i said get your mind off trading right close your laptop close your computer give it to your girlfriend say if you love me that you're not if you love me don't give me this back in 24 hours right i said go outside go to the gym go work out go to a bar have a beer whatever it is get your mind off of trading itself right and it's funny how like two hours after that he was perfectly fine right it's it's in that moment in that moment is so crucial of the decisions that you make right do you do the right thing or do you do the wrong thing when that when you're skewed right and we all can feel it we've all felt it like you said you've lost and you've won you know what that feeling is but how you become aware is by journaling by studying it by going in and saying hey this week on this time i overtraded 
here, my, here, are, here is how much I overtraded, right? You'll find if you post that stuff in the community, that feeling of like, ooh, you know, I know they're encouraging, but like, I look like an idiot. You might do it once, you might do it twice, but over time you're gonna be like, actually, when it's on Tuesday at 8 a.m. and I lose two trades in a row, I can sit here and I can post those two trades in, in the community and say, hey, I lost these two trades, but I didn't trade again. Here's my record. You, I didn't take a single trade. Look, haha, I did what I was supposed to do. I stayed within my risk management. Or you can sit there and you can fight the idea of, okay, do I really want to continue to jump in these trades? Because I'm going to probably want to post something in the community. And, you know, it's the accountability, right? It's the accountability of understanding, like, if if I hold myself, and me and Henry, we do the training exercises too. We do the training exercises too. And it's just an accountability factor of, if you know at the end of the week that you're going to have to share your results, whether it's on your, it doesn't, it's not supposed to be on your live. It could, it could be a whole separate account, a demo account. It's what it's supposed to be. But even just sharing your results, right? When Tuesday comes or Wednesday comes and you said, you know what? I'm up. I made my goal for the week, right? Am I going to get more respect by saying, by coming in on Sunday and saying, hey, I hit my goal and I stopped? Or do I want to try to go in on Sunday and say, hey, look how much money I made, look how much I made. But then we'd sit there and say, wait, the goal was the goal was 3%. You made eight. You're going to get more, more backlash from that rather than just hitting your goal and stopping because that's the correct thing to do. And I think that, that it, it goes a long way and it, you find consistency in it. But it's good that you shared that because it's it's something that um, you know you have to find yourself in this. You have to be so self aware. An unreasonably amount of self awareness is so required to be good. Um, it's something that I think over time, if you're aware and you don't turn your shoulder to your bad days, and you don't sh turn and and you recognize your good days. And I like to tell people too, how good are your good days? Because I know I've had really, 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 really good days to the point where I know that I can't have that really, really good day again. Over time, you start to realize that this stuff is so real, right? Your, your decisions now today, over time, your decisions will truly, truly affect your long growth that you may or may not have, like it's on you, it's on everyone. And when I realized that I was like, if I keep making these same mistakes, I'm getting nowhere. I'm gonna get nowhere. I'm gonna keep running in the same circle. I'm gonna have really, 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 really good days. And I'm gonna have really, 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 really bad days. And I'm gonna go one step forward, two steps back for the rest of my life. And then I started to realize how much can I handle, All right? What's a good day where I realize that if I go over that, I have this, I have the capability to potentially come in and mess it all up. Same thing with bad days. All right, what what can I afford to lose? With what's my risk appetite? And then with that, can I potentially go in and find a way to stop? Just stop. And I think it's so much easier said than done. But over time, when you're active in these calls, in these calls, you'll realize, hey, you know, I, when I traded uh, a couple of weeks ago, right? I, I went in and I traded. On a top step account and they they saw me trade back to back to back times on a pm session for fomc i lost every loss was in, within my risk off after all three losses i sat there and i was still within my risk i stopped trading right i put i put three bullets i put three bullets next to my desk and every time i take a trade i put it in my pocket once those three bullets are out i'm out of ammo and by the time those three are out, if my risk calculation is correct, I'll still be with where I'm supposed to be. And from there, I took my three losses. All right, great. I'll see you guys tomorrow AM session. Within the AM session, I took a couple of trades. I mitigated all the losses responsibly and even made it made more, right? Came out profitable on the week. Them being able to see that composure, seeing me take the loss, seeing me watch a session before that taking the loss and just not trading just because I didn't see my model and then seeing the day after that's where you gr grow. That's firsthand experience. And, you know, the live trading sessions we're going to have, we're going to continue to have them. It's just, Oh, there'll be a lot more next year rather than this year. Um, but what else you got Henry? Um, yeah, that's great. Touching on the psychological side of that. 
I'll just say Poppy too from a more technical perspective because we try and look at things from both ends, right? You have to understand the technicals, but also you know you got to know how to manage yourself. One of the best things that you could possibly do for yourself if you're finding yourself in a situation where the losses are too large or you're you're entering you're finding yourself entering early or you're managing things too tightly is to use the smallest amount of leverage available and so it sounds like you're trading the uh the mini contract is what it sounds like is that correct yeah yeah the mini mq and it's just i I switched today to the mes that's good yeah because it's it's a buck and a quarter uh, yeah and it moves slower you know the the deck's extremely violent in its movements so it'll, sure. It'll I'm, you out real quick. Yeah, I mean, I mean, MES and ES or M, NQ and NQ will, I mean, they'll move as pairs because it's just the difference in the, in the pricing. But, but right. if you ch- if you trade the micro, which is going to be the best option for you, you're giving yourself more breathing room in these trades. And you don't the the worst thing that you that you could possibly do right now if if you're at a new stage and you're trading and you're just really working on your development the worst thing you can do is trade with too much size because you're bringing emotion into the equation and you're also not giving yourself the opportunity to let a trade work and so going down to the lowest possible leverage and not focusing at all on making money is the best thing that you can do the money is going to come later after your understanding is there and you know how to manage the trade and how to manage yourself. But if you if you make the attempt to make a lot of money right now, you're depriving yourself of the learning opportunity. And so I appreciate you bringing this up because it's a really great learning opportunity and example for everyone is if you're having a difficulty with having large losing days or if you're you're finding yourself wanting to move or stop super fast to protect the trade or something like that the most likely reason for that is that you're trading with too much size and the best thing that you can do is move down to trading with the smallest leverage which is going to be trading one micro contract and not worrying about making money I'm just reading some of the chat right now. Someone said, I've studied ICT and lots of other strategies as well. Just about everything, really. The hardest thing for me is deciding what my model is, narrowing down my focus from all things I have learned. I started trading exactly two years ago now, December of 2021, but didn't find ICT until earlier this year. Any advice as to how to narrow down and decide my model? I would say your model is found through who you are as a trader. So I mentioned this on top step. I mentioned it on top step and I didn't know if I was a swing trader. I didn't know if I was a scalper. I didn't know if I was a day trader. I didn't know what I was. I I had no clue what I was. And over time, what I what I figured out is I've got to try all of it. Now I'm not saying this is for everyone, but I forced myself to hold trades. I forced myself to be in trades for seconds days, weeks, months, hours at a time to figure out what I corresponded with better. And it's not what, first off, it starts with what personality are you, right? Your model is going to be derived from who you are as a trader and how, how your timing works in the market. Another thing I would say is what do you resonate with the best? right? What time frames, and, and then from there work into potentially what models, right? When you're studying the charts or you're back testing, what areas of the market, right? That's something that you could send in. You could sit there and you could realize, you know what? I don't really know, but you might say, take screenshots of time frames. This is an action item that I'm giving you. And I, you know, you can respond back to me or the community or whatever in the DM take screenshots of time frames and circle or you know highlight what areas of the market catch your eye right and then from there send them to myself and henry and then from there we'll be able to say hey this is that area that you highlighted on this time frame here's a model right and then we can work from there right here's a model that is seen that you might not see you might not know it's a model but look at charts look at different time frames highlight areas that stand out to you 
right? This part of the chart caught my eye. This part of the chart caught, chart caught my eye. And then from there, we can sit there and say, hey, there's this model in there. Or, hey, there's nothing in here, right? Look here. Start to train your eye to look here. And so that's one of the best things that I can tell you to do is, one, understand yourself. Find your personality and what your timing is like in the trading, how long you like to hold trades, whatever the case is. But then also look at several different time frames and then hone in on certain areas that stand out to you. Highlight them, circle them, color them on your trading view charts and send them to myself and Henry. Right. And we'll sit there and we'll be able to determine whether or not there's anything there or not that you could potentially create a model from. That's why we're here. Hopefully that's a hopefully that's a good answer to your question. Anyone else got anything? I do apologize for earlier. I, we'll get better at that. We we grew, we doubled our size. We were a very small community. Now we've got so many more people in there. So we'll get better at having moderations and uh, having people have access to screen share and come on and talk and stuff like that. But, um, you know, we're at, we're at the one hour mark. If anyone has any other comments, questions, or concerns, please let us know. You know, we can hang around for a little bit longer if you guys have any comments or anything that you guys want to, you know, pick myself and Henry's brain, whether it's inside, or tra inside trading or outside of trading. If you want to know a little bit about myself and Henry, we're both open books. Um, I've got, you know, we all have our own little story. I think it's cool to realize that uh, each random passerby has a life as vivid and as complex as your own. And that's one thing that I love is how you have your own story. And I think it, you know, people are one of the hardest things to deal with, but they're also so fascinating and they're so interesting and there's so much you can learn. One thing that I do is every single week, Wednesday at lunchtime, I go through my call list and I randomly click someone on my call list and I call them and I ask them, is there anything that you've been going through that you could potentially feed me advice from? Or is there any new things that you might have learned? These aren't traders. These are just random humans on my call list, people that I haven't talked with in years, months, weeks, whatever. And I just say, hey, what can I love? What can I learn from you? What are some things that you've gone through over the past couple of weeks, days, whatever the case is, that might have been challenging that you overcame that you could give me a piece of advice that I might be able to take and ponder? Someone else said, I love how you both talk and like remind me of ICT already. Thanks for starting this like, for that ride. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. I, Michael's Thanks, amazing. Um, Jagger said, can you show us how you see the charts just briefly if you don't mind? Yes, I'll do a run through. Henry will do a quick run through. Um, I guess I can go into it right now. Um, I usually, so the way the Sunday calls work is I usually do the DXY. Henry does ES and NASDAQ. Myself and Henry are twins, identical with regards to analysis bias and how we trade. So if you would like potentially Henry's take on DXY or my take on ES or NQ, um, that's perfectly fine. I'll run through uh, DXY. Henry can run through ES and NASDAQ, just like we would kind of like a midweek review show you guys where we think the uh, week's going to go next week and how we close to this week. Um, but it's very similar. Me and Henry are 9.9 .9 times out of 10 on the same side of the market. And we have the same idea. But yeah, I'll go ahead and get into it. So dollar, Henry, you can tell me when my, um, when my screen is shared. You're good. All right. So I'll just kind of walk you through where we've been taught, like, kind of bring you up to speed with regards to uh, where I've been watching dollar. If you guys, and I think it's so cool and I really wish someone would have the time to do it, even though I know it's ours. If you were to go through and I asked Henry the other week, I was like, if you were to go through all of our calls throughout the entire year, how many weeks did the market move in the manner in which we thought it would days before? And surprisingly, it's seven, eight times out of 10. You know, we're not right every single week, but we are pretty pretty close to following the market um so really looking at a weekly chart understanding what's the low and the high of the year right the low was formed in july the high was formed in september october right so i'm going to take the low to the high and i'm going to grab the equilibrium right i want to see that equilibrium equilibriums are important so i have that equilibrium right when we were up here we were identifying how that was going to be kind of our draw on liquidity where the market could move now that we're there, right, I've realized that we've delivered below equilibrium. So I'm looking for discount arrays, right? The first thing that stands out to me is this order block right here, this weekly order block. Why is it a weekly order block? Because we have lows in here in the form of sell side liquidity that got ran through and purged with this one singular down close candle. Price then from that singular down close candle came up and broke market structure highs, right? So we pulled higher. 
So this down closed candle is now a weekly order block. How do I know what part of the weekly order block to identify? Well, let's start with the nearest one, which is the high, right? The high of this candle comes in at 102.564, right? So I'm gonna label this as a bullish order block on the weekly. From there, right? That's all I really need for right now for where price is. I'm very simple with my trading approach. I do not have a lot of stuff on my charts because to me, it fogs up what the chart's trying to tell me. And I would try to keep it in one or two areas of the, whatever time frame I'm on, what's most important, right? And I don't look up here and I don't look down here because we're on a weekly time frame. I'm not looking months and months. I want to know where we are right now, why we're trading, where we are trading, where we're coming from, right? We're coming off of this weekly order block and we're trading just under this equilibrium. That's all I need. If there's one other thing I would note, it would be what's called a weekly SIBI, right? It's a sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency. It's a form of a fair value gap. If you're familiar with ICT concepts, that could be a potential area that I might note. And I could go ahead and just note this if I wanted to also, right? That could be a potential area where price could draw too. But this is one time frame. I need a little bit more. So when I go in on a daily time frame and I'm looking at these levels, one thing I would note too, and we've talked about it in a couple of the calls, right? Is this buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency known as a BISI. It's a fair value gap, but bullish. And we realized that when we inverted it or invalidated it and we came through it this now gets used as inversion it's the support and resistance idea right what is used as support and is broken is now used as resistance a very simple trading idea it's the same thing with these certain arrays that michael teaches is when some form of an array is invalidated or broken what it was used for in this case it was used for support see right here it was used as support when you get candle closure through that to invalidate this area it now becomes resistance now from there another thing that is key within this process of trading is understanding candle closure right if you're just going high low wick all that stuff you'll get lost candle closure is key so me and henry were talking about how when we pulled up into this area even though we spiked through it, the candle closure was actually at the halfway point, the midpoint, or I know it's a fancy word, it's called consequent encroachment. You wanna use midpoint, use midpoint. Does not matter, it's tomato, tomato. But the halfway point, we use this because we study the candle closure and how price reacts to it. So when price pushes up and through it, you might say, well, Carson, it, it invalidated it. It went past it right here. Well, where did it close? It closed back at the consequent encroachment or midpoint of it. That shows me that this is still valid with the idea that it's being inverted as resistance. So when that happens, I now look to see if the next couple of days, do we push higher and then continue to potentially get back above it? Or are we now still, this is showing me that it's closing below or at the consequent encroachment of it or midpoint it's showing me that the narrative and order flow is still bearish, right? We're still bearish. So from there, I immediately look at this singular high and see if we stay below it. And if, if so, do we stay inside of this? And if so, what does the candle closure look like, right? If I go back here and I look at this candle, right from there, the next day we closed, right? This day, we closed at the midpoint. The next day, we closed at the lower half of it. That's showing me that we have closure to the downside. We can still expect bearish prices. We can still expect price to go lower, right? What does the next day do, right? Closes here. Where is this line? Now we've closed back below the equilibrium, right? We've, closed, we've now closed back below the equilibrium. Now I would prefer price be very sensitive to the lower half of this, and go where? Well, here's a target. Here's a target. Here's another buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency that has not been touched yet. There's a target, right? And overall, this was our discount array, right? So now I'm expecting further down closure candle on the daily, right? So if, if this next day, I'm now looking to see if we get some form of pullback, 
right? I'm looking at previous day's highs and lows. We've got a low right here. And we also have this equilibrium, right? We can't forget about this main point that we have, right? And I'm looking to see if price does anything, right? What do we do right there? Boom. We trade right up into the previous day's low. That's where I could, obviously this is the DXY, but this is the area where you're wanting to be a seller. It's a little too zoomed in, right? F try to find cells in that, as we're trading higher, that power of three. We didn't quite get it, but close. But same thing, same thing applies, right? You're looking for prices to go lower, right? And trade into areas of sell side liquidity being this low, this low and inefficiencies, which would be this and other arrays, which would be that weekly, right? And then from there, you can see how price now is very energetic, creates a volume imbalance, goes into these levels, finally fills this, right? Now we hit a very key higher time frame, higher time frame array before this day happened. So on this day, before the next daily candle happened, I talked about how we had done what we thought we were going to do and continue lower on dollar, right? Dollar goes lower. If you're in a trending market, ES goes or NQ and indices go higher. We had delivered to this target the night before we went higher. I said, I now, I now expect, even though we've been bearish, I now expect a pullback off of that, right? And what do we get? We get a return back into this volume imbalance and back into this overall range right back into that overall range. And then today we just hung around, right? We pushed up a little bit higher. And so this is, this is an order block. If you're new to ICT, we'll cover that stuff, all that good stuff, but pushes just back up into this order block after establishing a daily high and a daily low. All it's simply doing is pushing up into a premium like any healthy market's supposed to do. It goes from premium to discount, premium to discount. And so now going into next week, we're in a predicament of we're coming off of this important area, this weekly order block. Now, even though Friday we did close back below this equilibrium, right? Now the game is, and this is what we'll cover on Sunday, is do we continue going lower, right? And maybe attack lows down here, or do we continue, do we come down here? Do we fill this area right now? We have a another busy, just like this one, just like this one. Right now we have another buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency, fair value gap that we come in here, right? Do we come in here and then do we make a low and push higher, right? Because we have areas in here that we could potentially come. Why would we want to go back up in there? Because we have this weekly imbalance. That's what the market does. Think of a paint roller, right? Buy side to sell side inefficiencies. When the market's inefficient, it has to go fill it. The market has to be balanced to move in the correct direction, right? It doesn't just go one. It, it doesn't just go one direction for ever, right? It would be way too easy. So it has to find ways to balance itself, right? What's imbalanced has to become balanced before it can go in its true direction. So that's a little bit of where we are within dollar. I am. I got to spend some more time to look over where we went this week. And, you know, that's what I'll go into on Sunday is, is understanding where and how we could potentially unfold. But I am a little less bearish. We've been bearish all the way since up here, right? So if you've been following the community, you've understood that we've been expecting all of these prices. You can go see it. It's on YouTube. We've been expecting all of these prices to be delivered to. We've just now delivered to them. So now I go a little more neutral and I don't expect too much out of the market and I let it give me a little bit more data to understand, all right, are we gonna pull up into this weekly sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency, or are we gonna stay heavy handed to the downside? Because on the weekly, we still close below this equilibrium, right? We still close, we, even though we pulled up into here, if we would have gotten closure back above it, that would have given me a sign that we could potentially be a little bit more bullish now, but now I'm just a little bit more neutral. I need some time to go study the charts and re readjust and see where we actually are and, have time going over some things, but that's the dollar. That's where I see the dollar right now. That's kind of how I read it and how I've gotten to this, where we've gotten to this point, right? Even up here, why were we bearish, right? Why, how, how was he bearish from up there, right? We had a buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency right here, right on the weekly. So let me take all this stuff off for a second. 
So we had an area, just like it, it goes through all time frames. It doesn't matter the time frame. We closed through this, right? We closed through it on a weekly. I pointed this out days before it happened. We pulled back up into this area. Notice how we overstretched it. Look at the candle closure. So when we pushed up into this area and then Friday closed and we had filled all of it as inversion and closed outside of it. Now, what am I expecting this next week, right? I'm expecting something like this. It, it could be this, it could spike a little bit harder. It could just be right here or it could just go down, right? I'm expecting that. We fill it one more time and then we go, right? But I'm expecting all of that when Friday closes here. Right. It might have not, it doesn't do that right off the market open. Right. It could have done it on a Wednesday or a Thursday. And you don't have to be a seller up here. You can let this form and you might be a seller down. You might be a seller right here after seeing that and then only be a seller right, and then buy back here. You only have to catch a portion of the move. Right. It, you, it could be that. Right. You don't need to get the high and the low. You can figure that stuff out and work your way better and better and better, grab the low, low hanging fruit, right? Grab the low hanging fruit and get the least amount of threshold to get yourself a win and get momentum and get an understanding of, of why and where you're going with within your account. Um, so that's the dollar. Henry, I'll let you take the yes. Hopefully that made sense. Oh, okay, wait, I'll answer Chuck really quick too. Um, so are you both trading full time? Uh, yes, it, it is a full-time job. I do have a very, I, I have a, um, an outside job that I work. That's, uh, pretty flexible with this stuff. A lot of my coworkers, they know I trade. I have my own office, all that stuff. Sometimes I can work from home. Some it's very flexible. Um, but I am a supply chain source lead, uh, kind of a production planner for a very high end multi-million dollar decking company. Uh, so what I do is I look at orders and inventory and stuff like that and basically plan all that stuff. It's super me. It's super what I like to do. Um, and I'm just, I'm comfortable with it. Um, I'm just utilizing the job, saving up. I'm very young. I have so much time that I love the people that I work with. They're good to me. They understand my situation. So I'm just utilizing it as best, best as I can, squeezing as much juice out of the lemon um, as I possibly can before I go and kind of go on to bigger and better things because this is my hometown. I grew up here. Um, I've been very fortunate to kind of find my way and grow as an individual here. I have a very good support system. Um, but to me, they're both full-time jobs. I mean, they both give, I spend just as much time doing um, my production scheduling and planning and stuff like that. I spend more time here doing all this stuff, but uh, it gives me a, an out. It gives me a little bit of an escape when I get go crazy on the charts. Sometimes you need a little healthy balance. Good question though. All right. I'll hop into ES and NASDAQ. We'll just do a, a quick one because we'll get a bit deeper into it on Sunday. All right, can you see my screen? should be showing now yeah you're good all right cool so i like to keep clean um and just focus on the the most recent p rays i use fair value gaps a lot so here i have a busy marked out right a buy side imbalance sell side inefficiency that means the buy side has been delivered or an up close candle has been created and the sell side or a down close candle into it has not been delivered yet. A fair value gap is just a separation between two candles, right? So this candle's high to this candle's low. Here you can see that between this candle and this candle, the wicks overlap. The wick right there and the wick right there, there's no gap in between like there is right here. So that's what makes this a fair value. Um, what we can see is we've been creating fair value gaps higher. And this is on the weekly chart on yes. And what that means when we're creating these value gaps higher is that 
institutional funds are participating in this move because the algorithm that is the market and re-delivers it to specific areas like NCs right here and above old highs and below old lows like here and up here where liquidity is resting. Uh, it creates these fair value gaps as a way to show a signature of pricing toward these areas. Also to provide opportunities where large players can enter the market because all the market does is go to inefficiencies and liquidity. That's it. That's all it does. And so what we can see on a week on the way up and so point is delivering to this which we've done up here of the old high up here. No. Henry, your audio is cutting in and out a little bit. Hang on, I have to reset. Or I'll try the other mic. Give me one moment. How's that? Yeah, you're good. Um, okay. There we go. Is that better? Yeah, I hear you. Okay, sweet. Okay, so we're creating these for bag gaps, and we can continue to price up toward the buy side, which is above the swing high right here. So that's a three candle structure one, two, three, where the middle candle has a lower high to the left and to the right of it. Same thing right here. Swing high. So we have the middle candle and to the left and to the right is a lower high. Right? So when when retail or or even larger institutions are getting short through a move like this, they have to protect their position. And so if you're getting short in a move right here, where is your stop loss most likely going to be placed? It's going to be placed above an old high up here. So that means that there's rest, there's stop orders resting up here, right? And so if you were in a short position and you have to cover it, you have to buy it up here to cover your position. And so smart money who's been buying down here can use this as liquidity to offset their positions. Because if they bought down here, then it's gonna be easy for them to sell up here because people have to buy it back when they're stopping out. So it's easy to sell to a buyer. And so that's why we want to be participating in a discount as a buyer so we can sell up here. So instead of trading this like a breakout idea and waiting for price to reach up above this high and then buying it above the high, we're buying down in here and we're buying throughout here and we're buying throughout here and we're buying throughout here to sell it above this high and above this high, which we reached for this week. And so now as we go into a daily chart, you can see how we've continued to reach up toward that level, right? We created these fair value options here. Price trades down into the inefficiency to re-deliver it right there, and then trading away from it, continuing to displace up. Here's another inefficiency, buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency. Price trades into it right there, and then continues to deliver up toward the buy side above this high right there. And you can see that was reached for just shy on Wednesday, came two ticks from reaching to it. And then in today's action, reached above it. And where does it reach for when it reaches above that high? Whenever you're, whenever you're looking at how far price can go beyond an area of liquidity, like if price is gonna reach above this old high, then what you wanna look for next is an inefficiency that it can reach to above. So if we look on the weekly chart, what do we see right here? There's that inefficiency, the separation between this candle's low and this candle's high. So we'd have that like this, right? And since it's been partially re-delivered already right here, you can see how this candle tapped into it right there. I'll refine it to there because that's the remaining portion of the inefficiency. And so now if price reaches above this high, which we saw it happen this week, 
then it can go to the midpoint and the high end of this inefficiency. And that's what we saw right there. And so now that sell side imbalance on the weekly chart has been redelivered. Uh, but what I see as we as we go forward, and we'll just keep it brief for the remainder, and we can go deeper on Sunday if anyone has any questions. But on the monthly chart, there's nothing really keeping price from this point from reaching up toward the buy side above this high right here. And so all I look for is when I go down to the weekly and the daily charts, is I look for the recent discount arrays that price can trade to and then continue working up toward this high. So when I go to a weekly chart, we can see that this week, price created a new buy side imbalance right here. So that leaves this area right there as an area that price can trade to and continue working up toward the buy side. That, if it digs a little bit deeper, then there's this buy side imbalance right there as well. So you can see something like this. Okay, It's important to note too that we're already in pretty close proximity to the buy side up here as well though. So if earlier in the week next week, we continue to trade above this imbalance right here, then you may not see a return into here at all. Because on the daily chart, you can see that a new buy side imbalance could potentially be being created right here. So you have it for every fair value, you have, you have a three candle structure, right? You have the first candle, then you have the second candle, that's the candle with the imbalance, and then the third candle right there. So here you can see we have the first candle, the second candle, and then if you have a third candle like this, then you'd now have an imbalance between those candles like that. And so if you get that and you're getting closure above this, which was the weekly imbalance, then we're already in such close proximity to the buy side up here that the algorithm can reprice quickly and reach for this high. And so if you start seeing that, then the likelihood that we return into that higher time frame inefficiency before reaching up to here is, is lower. Okay. And so that's kind of what we're looking for. So at this point, I really just keep my eye toward the beginning of the week are we creating that imbalance on the on the daily chart? And if we're not, then I look down to these areas right here and right here as areas where price can trade to and then continue up higher. That's it on ES, unless anybody has any questions. Same idea here on NASDAQ, right? Here's that imbalance on the weekly chart. So you could see something like this occur. You'll see that on NASDAQ, it's been, compared to ES, it's been relatively weaker. In this run, in this enti the entirety of this run, it's been stronger if you look at the retracement and where both of them reach to. But if you just look in this recent price action, you can see that ES is continuing to price higher and create that new daily imbalance, whereas NASDAQ is not doing that. So NASDAQ would be more likely to make the retracement into the weekly by sign of balance, which we see right here. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Axel. Um, all right, I'll stop. I'll stop there for today. We'll go a bit deeper on Sunday if anyone has any questions. But if anyone has any uh, at the moment, feel free to hop on and ask. You can raise your hand, or you can leave a question in the chat. Otherwise, we'll um, we'll work toward. Closing it up for today. Anyone have any questions? And I'll, I'll say too, if uh, any of these concepts are unfamiliar to you, um, just keep coming back, right? You're gonna, you're gonna learn these things and you'll be able to get a better understanding for the acronyms and, and that kind of thing as you continue to watch the videos and come back every week. Taylor, I see you, you can go ahead. Should be able to unmute and come on. Am 
mic's not working. That's all right. No worries. If you have a question, you can put it in the chat. Carson, you have any thoughts? Your your mic is muted, Carson. Sorry. Um, I'm good to see. Uh, it's it's good to see that we finally delivered to our, my buy side target at, on ES. I mean, that we were waiting for that. I wanted a little bit more of a retracement. I was hoping we kind of immediately rebalanced that weekly. We left a little tiny busy, but um, all is well. I mean, we've, we've been targeting this stuff for a while, so it's totally, that? it is what it is. I'm, I'm thankful that you guys were able to hop on. You guys took time out of your Friday night and took an hour and a half out of your meanless Friday night and actually spent it with us so i'm forever grateful and appreciative for the ones that actually took on the time to do that it shows me that the ones on this call i remember faces i remember names very well you guys are taking time out of your day to learn you guys are doing the right steps right you're curious you're figuring this stuff out you're doing the things that others won't to get the other to get to things that others don't right that's the whole mindset of it and and i know that that carries a long way so i do appreciate all of you guys for hopping on it goes it, it goes so far just for you guys to sit here and listen to us, right? This was completely free that me and Henry do this out of the bottom of our hearts because we love helping you guys. The reason why we love helping you guys is because we know you guys can do it. We know you on the other side of that call can do it. It's, it, it is in your hands. The ball is in your court. It can be done. I've done it. Henry's done it. Multiple other people. I can list off a whole bunch of names that I've seen people that directly correlate their life work to getting better at this stuff. And it, it, it happens. It comes true. I promise you that road gets more and more clear as the days go by. So I appreciate you guys for taking some time, spending it with us on a Friday night. Hopefully you guys got value out of this, both inside and outside of the markets. Feel free, go in, mess with the website, reach out to community members, reach out to myself or Henry. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, we hear you. We know what we can potentially help with and your feedback goes miles. I promise you it does, right? It's the whole idea of whatever you're fearful, both inside and outside of trading. The idea of fear is miles wide, but it is only an inch deep. Just take a step, right? The world will spin around tomorrow just like it does every single day. I appreciate all of you guys. That's all I have. I will see you guys hopefully on Sunday. Those are our, our, our that's our big call. Um, you guys will get all the rundowns there and uh, get a lot more in depth with, with regards to charts and where we see everything going. That's it for me. Thank you guys. Yeah, I'll just say a couple last things. Thanks, thanks everyone for being here today. Thanks for joining the community. We're excited to have you here and to be part of your development and your journey. Uh, for the Sunday call, you can go into the events calendar, like I showed you on the website, and you can find the link for it there. I will say too, go into your, your emails. You may have gotten the email for tonight, uh, but go into your email and do a search for team at firsthandtrading.com. We've been having some issues with going into the spam box. So if you go into your spam and find the email there, just move it into your inbox. And then for future emails, you should receive them right to your inbox because we do like to send the, the link out uh, in the form of email as well. Um, let's see, any last thoughts? I think that is pretty much it. We'll see you on Sunday for the, the regular call at 10. Yeah, enjoy your guys' weekend. Enjoy it. Yeah. See you guys right. soon. Well, thanks, thanks for being here. Um, this recording will be shared on YouTube and uh, pass it around if you like, tell your friends to, to come join you, and we're excited. We'll see you on Sunday.